It is said that today's story, it's a special photo shoot for the Olympics in France. It not only shows the human landscape of Paris, it also satirizes an environmental issue that is closely related to human beings. Let's get started. A research ship was ordered to arrive at the North Pacific Ocean to conduct an ecological survey. Sophia, the heroine, is in charge of the operation. The purpose of their trip was to track a tagged shortfin mako shark, not knowing that everyone is about to risk their lives for it. As the four team members dive to the bottom of the sea, the carnage begins. Sophia is up there scanning with her sonar. Her sonar scans from above reveal that the target is approaching. But what's not to be expected? Just not watching for a while. The shark has grown from 2 meters to 7. Sophia looked at the screen with disbelief. Always felt like something was wrong. The shark was so big that they didn't dare to move. But one of the team is thinking of tagging it again. He slowly approached and fired a flare. And in an instant, the signal did retag the shark. But the four team members were met with a frenzy of retaliation. Sophia was desperate to see what was happening. And without thinking, she grabbed his weapon and prepared to help. But just as she dove into the water, she saw the remains of his team, realizing that all of them might have died. Sophia rushed to look around in horror. A shark in a fishing net darted out and dragged her straight into the abyss. As the pressure around her doubled, Sophia's eardrum ruptured on the spot, and she was instantly snapped out of it. Sophia cut the net around her ankles, and that's how she managed to get out of the abyss, with only one breath left in her chest. Sophia was able to escape at the last moment. Flash forward to three years later. Everything has changed since then. On the banks of the Seine, in front of the Eiffel Tower, two young men are playing fishing. The first time they found a bicycle. The second time, they found a cannonball. The police came to the scene. The truth of the matter was soon investigated. It turned out that the shell was left over from World War II. The police found another 154 shells nearby. But what they didn't know was that there were more shells hidden somewhere under the river. By now, Sophia had changed careers. She is now an aquarium docent. The accident left her traumatized. Sophia doesn't seem to want to talk about the past anymore. She thought she'd never have anything to do with the past again. But on her way home, she was stopped by a girl named Mika. Mika is a member of a private marine conservation organization. It is mainly dedicated to protecting the marine environment and life. In their daily tracking and observation, they accidentally found a shortfin mako shark beacon. But here's the puzzle. This shark has left the ocean. It's now heading towards the Seine. The reason Mika called Sophia over was so she could use her experience to lure the sharks back to the ocean. Sophia was incredulous. She didn't think it could be the same beacon, and it's a fool's errand to guide the sharks. It's an awkward conversation. Sophia left the scene, and she returned home. The images from three years ago seemed like yesterday. Sophia turned on her computer, which had been locked away for a long time. But when she activated the shark beacon, she did see the shark on the banks of the Seine, and it was heading towards the center of Paris. So Mika and the others were right. And that's what sent Sophia into a panic. If the shark is not eliminated in time, the people who swim in the river will be in danger. To confirm the existence of the shark, Sophia followed the beacon to the river. The sharks don't normally survive in freshwater, or perhaps the beacon had drifted here. Soon after, she came to a homeless shelter. But there's no sign of anyone here. A small dog was barking at the river. It seemed that its owner had fallen into the river. Sophia quickly realized. If the beacon had fallen off, it couldn't have drifted against the current. And there's all sorts of information that suggests there really are sharks here. Sophia went back to the river to observe the next day. And found the sharks still roaming around. Then a phone call came in. It turned out that the river police had salvaged a body. The so-called river police are responsible for patrolling and managing the Seine River. They came to the scene to check it out. This is the homeless man who disappeared last night. But for some reasons... Only part of the hobo's body remains. The police thought it might be some kind of large creature. That's why they called Sophia, a former marine expert, and Mika, who is familiar with marine life. Judging from the bite marks, it's basically confirmed that it's the shortfin mako shark. Sophia then reported the situation to the police chief and suggested to shut down the sluice gates to eliminate the shark. The sheriff didn't believe it. She decided to send a few officers to check the water. Sophia and Mika thought it was too risky, but the officers swore that they wouldn't be afraid. Sophia had no choice but to go with the boat to help with the investigation. But Mika left in a hurry. The Seine is a very beautiful river. It is said that you can see 70% of the famous buildings in Paris. But at the moment, they are not in the mood to enjoy it. They were more worried about the sharks. The police quickly confirmed the exact location based on the beacon. Three heavily armed police officers jumped in. Because the river water is different from seawater. The view from below is only a few meters away. At first, the officers didn't think there was a shark. But soon they felt a strong presence. Watching from the shore, Mika was anxious. She was worried that the officers would harm the shark. So she quietly called the conservation organization. He asked Hecker to hack the beacon to cut it off. This will help the sharks to hide their location. At the same time, Sophia lost the signal. She rushed to the police to alert them below. A few moments later, three officers returned safely to the boat. None of them had seen the shark. But the sonar system confirms that it's a big one. Sophia was surprised when she came ashore. Because beacons don't just disappear. Until she saw Mika not far away, Sophia realized what was happening. Sophia went to the Marine Conservation Organization and asked Mika why did she do this. Mika explained that it was just to protect the sharks, and she's calling on everyone to do the same. Sophia was speechless. 
It's true to protect marine life, but this is a shark that threatens Paris. At the same time, the police officer reported a shark in the river. He thinks he should take Sophia's advice to observe it immediately and eliminate the danger. The sheriff's office had a headache. Because there's a triathlon coming up, there will be journalists and racers from all over the world. So it's impossible to block off the entire riverbank. Besides, she doesn't have the authority to do so. The only way is to talk to the mayor. The next morning, the sheriff took Sophia to the mayor's office. But the mayor was indifferent. She was more concerned about the competition in a few days. This event not only cost $1.7 billion, but it's also Paris calling card to the world. If something goes wrong at this time, there's no need for her to be mayor. Sophia warns that if the race continues, the race could turn into a massacre. The mayor retorted, I don't care. So even if something goes wrong during the race, it's also a failure on the part of the police. Seeing that the mayor could not be persuaded, the police chief and the others had to leave in anger. Since the highest authority did not agree to block the river, they were ready to use their own power to kill the shark. But just as they were about to take action, suddenly there was an emergency. And who turned off the signal before came to Sophia? She said he activated the beacon again, but she saw that the shark had gone into the underground reservoir in Paris. What worries her more is that Mika has confirmed the shark's location. She's taking dozens of fans tonight to try and guide it, thinking of the murders that the gray and green sharks have committed. That's why Ben scrambled to get help. That night, Mika did bring many fans to the underground reservoir. She wanted to use her sonar system to guide the sharks back to the sea. Everyone admired Mika's courage and determination, but little did they know, the next step is more dangerous than they can imagine. At the same time, Sophia and the police are on their way. They went through a long underground tunnel, and then they entered the famous Empire of Death in Paris. Let me tell you something, in the early days of Paris, when the city was being built, it was almost hollowed out and created an intricate underground world. Later on, Paris couldn't build high buildings. As a result, cemetery resources have become very tight. So people took their bones underground, and then with the opening of the Seine River, a natural reservoir was formed underneath Paris, and it became known as the Empire of Death. The place where Mika is now is a deep circular well. The only exit is a narrow passageway. It's very difficult for the people inside to escape within a short period of time. When Sophia and the police arrived at the scene, Mika had already dived into the water with her sonar. Sophia urges her to come back. The sharks could attack at any moment. During the conversation, they saw a fin surfacing. One large and one small. Two of them. Sophia realizes that the shark has had its baby. So Mika is in a little more danger. And here's the kicker. Mika not only refused to listen, but reached out and stroked the baby shark's head, claiming that there could be no danger. It was a shock to everyone in the audience. It seems that the shark is not in danger. A police officer jumped into the water and tried to pull Mika back. But Mika refused to go back to shore. The next moment, a sudden situation scared everyone. The water was already slippery and narrow. So many people fell into the deep well, causing even more confusion. And the water was soon dyed red with blood. The small space has become a slaughterhouse. Seeing that the scene has gone out of control, officers subconsciously drew their guns and shot at the shark. But the weak bullets had no effect. The only exit became everyone's last hope. Everyone is trying to get out. But the stampede has caused new casualties. Looking at the chaos in front of her, Sophia's eyes were filled with grief and helplessness. Twelve people died in the accident. The hospitals of Paris were filled with injured people. The tragedy could have been avoided altogether. But there are those who underestimate the power of nature. After the incident, the police investigated the deep well and found something new here. When she saw that one of the shark pups had died, Sophia couldn't help but think. She took the shark's body back to study it. Only then did the truth emerge. It turns out that the reason why the shark can adapt to fresh water is due to a mutation in its body and then swam into the same by mistake. That's why it's a tragedy today. When the shark's stomach was cut open, dozens of tiny fry appeared inside. This is not normal, because how can a shark pup get pregnant? Considering that the previous shark was only one. So Sophia exclaimed that the shark had evolved. It even evolved into parthenogenesis, which explains why it's growing so fast. It's all because it's a mutant. Sharks must swim into deep wells to have babies. That is to say, the location of the well is the shark's home in the Seine. The shark must be eliminated now. Otherwise, it will multiply and flood the whole of Paris. Then the chief took Sophia to visit the mayor again and told her what was at stake. But the mayor still wouldn't budge. She accused the police of being a bunch of losers. Sophia couldn't stand it any longer. She shouted at the mayor to think twice and emphasized that if she continued to hold the competition, she'd pay a terrible price for it. The mayor didn't give a damn. She threw the sheriff and the others out of his office in order to avoid panic among the public. The mayor announced it on TV, claiming that sharks don't even exist. The 12 victims of the last few days had nothing to do with sharks. The whole nation should be ready for a triathlon next, and that's what everyone should be talking about. At this point, there is only one day left before the race. Police officer had no choice but to give up. Sophia quietly approached the best police officer Adil and persuaded him to call on everyone to pull themselves together. If the shark is left untreated, tomorrow's race could turn into a tragedy. After much thought, the police officer listened to Sophia's advice. And then, the entire police force of the river area decided to use their own strength to take down that damn shark. Though the task was fraught with danger, 
How can a righteous cop just sit back and do nothing? At Sophia's suggestion, here's the plan. The first team arrived at the well through the previous entrance. Then they jumped into the well and went down the first 30 meters. After reaching the bottom, swim through a passageway about 20 meters long, just enough to get into a very tightly sealed catacomb. They can plant some bombs there. Then they can use sonar to attract the sharks. Wait until the shark stops. They'll detonate the bombs and destroy the catacombs. And then the collapsed building will block the exits on both sides. And the sharks will be trapped. At the same time, everyone swims out through another 80 meters of passageway. Outside is the wide expanse of the Seine. The second team prepares to meet them on the river, just in case something goes wrong. Such a well-thought-out plan leaves no questions unanswered. So the next day was the day of execution. It was the official day of the triathlon in Paris. Everyone had to finish before the race. The first team was led by Sophia. The four of them speed up the pace to the deep well. They carefully dive 30 meters. After reaching the bottom, they swam through a 20-meter-long passage. The catacombs were in full view. The bomb was set up without incident. But when it came to attracting the sharks, there was an accident. Someone lit a burning stick to increase the field of view. But what they found was not a single shark. Hundreds of sharks were densely packed. It turns out that in just one day, the sharks have given birth to so many babies. And their growth rate is much faster than usual. The people do not dare to slow down. They lowered their sonar and prepared to evacuate. Then a couple of sharks suddenly attacked. In just a few seconds, one of them was chopped to pieces. Seeing that his teammates have not activated their remote control devices, one of the officers bravely swam over to them. But just as he picks up the device and activates it, he was eaten to pieces by the sharks. In the nick of time, the countdown to the bomb has begun. Sophia grabbed the last officer and rushed out. Just as the two of them swam out of the tomb, there was an explosion behind them. At the same time, Harris welcomes the 2024 World Triathlon Championships, and people are flocking to the banks of the Seine to celebrate. Journalists and athletes from all over the world. It's a magnificent sight. The mayor of the city is now coming out in front of the crowd, and this tournament will surely shine a light on her political achievements. After an impassioned speech, the mayor fired the gun. Hundreds of athletes jumped in the river. They were so enthusiastic, unaware that death is on its way. On the other side, a kilometer away on the Seine, the second team received Sophia and the police without incident. They thought the job was done, but Sophia plunged back into the river. She followed the same path that she had come from to make sure that the exit had completely collapsed, and she saw a tightly knit pile of rocks. Sophia breathed a sigh of relief. At the next moment, the sharks rushed out apparently. The thickness of the collapse is still too thin to trap this ferocious fish. Sophia was extremely frustrated, but she doesn't dare to make a move. The shark circled Sophia and then dashed toward the Seine, realizing that the people outside would be in danger. Sophia swam out of the water, but just as she was about to board the second team, something terrible happened. The shark seemed to be deliberately teasing Sophia. First, it gave her hope, then it turned her into despair. Fortunately, Sophia and Adil survived. They climbed hard onto the floating motorboat. What happened next was very strange. The sharks didn't continue to attack Sophia. Instead, they swam in the direction of the race. A few minutes later, the lively game began to go awry. Someone made a dull noise and disappeared, followed by more screams. By the time the referee finally realizes the shark's presence, it was too late. The horror of the scene shocked everyone. Everyone screamed. The scene was in a state of chaos. No one dared to stay any longer, as more and more people were killed. The original celebration turned into a massacre. Looking at the gruesome scene in front of her, the mayor was scared out of his wits. And now the security forces have stepped in. They're all well-trained and calm. It's a massive volley at a shark. But the shark is stronger than they thought. Sophia's bomb didn't even kill them. Not to mention the bullets. How can they do anything? Perhaps the shark's intelligence has been purified. It swam towards the shells. It turns out that the police hadn't cleared all the hidden dangers before. The violent movement sent the shells flying. And then they hit the bottom of the river hard. One of the shells finally activated. And it causes a chain reaction. A violent explosion creates a huge wave that swept over everyone. As the tide came in, Dill held Sophia in their arms. The mayor watched as she was swallowed by the river. They don't know how long it took. Sophia and Adil survived. But the situation was inexplicable. The place that they had managed to climb to. That was the top of a building. Dill trembled and asked if it was over. But Sophia looked ahead and fell silent. That's when one of the dorsal fins surfaced. Then more dorsal fins appeared on the surface. One of them was huge. Apparently the original gray shark wasn't dead. And as far as the eye can see, the city of Paris is flooded by the river. It's as if all the gates and systems have been paralyzed. At the end of the story, the sharks not only took over Paris, and then Europe, following the flow of the ocean, it took over the rest of the world.